YouTubers, what we are going to do today is we are going to sketch and cut stickers. Um, this is really nice because there are no registration marks. You're not going to deal with any of the lineup issues that a lot of the print and cut stickers have. Um, and I like this because it provides like a handwritten kind of feel. Um, we're going to be making labels for um, some canned I did some canning, so we're gonna make some labels for them. And I kinda like the handwritten feel that these have. Um, the other nice thing is you can really squish a lot on a piece of paper, so you're not wasting any with any of the like traditional marks for print and cut. So, I'm gonna show you what you need. All right, forgive me, I had to go fish it out of the garbage can. But these are the traditional print and cut marks, and so you have to stay within that bound for um, your stickers. And when you sketch and cut, see how I always manage I was able to use my entire piece of sticker paper, where this I had to stay within my boundary. All right, so first thing, you're obviously gonna need sticker paper. Um, this, I will freely admit, is cheap sticker paper from Amazon. It's actually meant to be used for shipping labels. Um, I'm a big fan of it because if you screw up, it's not expensive. Um, there are a lot of fancy sticker papers out there, so if you wanna go use one, knock yourself out. Highly recommend this just because it's cheap. There's a hundred pages. And if you ever need to test something out, see what happens. This is um, a good tester. The other nice thing is this is a matte paper. And part of the reason I bought this is because for print and cut, a lot of the glossy papers provide like um, a shine and a glare, which makes it hard for the silhouette to read. And that's why I went with the matte paper. Um, when you're doing sketch and cut stickers, um, you can do a lot of the glossy papers because the machine's not having to read anything since we're just going to sketch and then cut. Um, so you can use any of the fancy papers that you want to, gold, dark papers, anything that you want to because the machine's not having to read. So do keep that in mind if you want to make like um, hand lettered looking stuff for Christmas, you could put that on some like dark dark green paper with a gold pen. You wouldn't be able to do that with a printer. Um, it would kind of struggle with that. So um, keep that in mind. But for this and labels for my pantry, cheap, scrap, uh, cheap sticker paper. And then, um, and this is eight and a half by 11 inch sticker paper. And the well-loved mat makes its triumphant return. Um, always keep your mats. You never know when you might need one. This is my well-loved mat, and the reason I highly suggest the well-loved mat for this is because we're writing, and if you um, do that on a stickier mat, you are just going to adhere the sticker paper to the mat. Um, even if you don't use that big of a force, you're just going to manage to just really stick it to the, paper, the mat. So keep that in mind. Um, so well-loved mat, and then I'm going to use some painter's tape to put my sticker paper on here. And then I'm a big fan of the Chomos marker holders. Um, this is the marker holder. She has a pen holder too, which you don't need. The marker holder will hold just about anything you want to do. Big fan of this. Not as big of a fan of the Silhouettes pen holder. Um, so, but you're going to need something. If you have the pen holder, it's fine. Um, you're going to need something to hold your pencil. Um, and then we're just using a little Pilot regular black pen. You could use any color pen you want to, which is the fun part about this too, is you could use glittery pens, shimmery pens, white pens, whatever it is you want to use, you can totally use that. And then we are going to do this today in my Cameo too, but you can do this in any of the machines, one, two, three, or four. You can use the auto blades on this too. It's a very forgiving, great kind of beginner project. All right, so I did want to let you know I was a brave blonde and I upgraded my software to 4.4552. So far, so good. Um, it's got some of the cool new features. It can auto scan, auto trace the PNGs, which is pretty cool. I have, this is a standard piece of eight and a half by 11 inch paper. And then down here is your transparency tool. Um, it doesn't really matter for this one. And so I'm gonna come over here and draw a circle. And so one of the defaults I changed now is when it, it fills stuff in automatically instead of, um, instead of it being the outline. So if I type with Arial, see how it fills in now? 
I thought that would be easier for the videos. But now we have a filled in circle. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to my fill panel and I'm just gonna, um, it's the boxes here. So then it's just empty. So for the little, for the regular mouth lids I've been doing, um, you can come over here to this transform panel in the scale tool. I've been doing 1.8 inches. And then I'm gonna copy and paste. For the wide mouth lids, I've been doing 2.8. And obviously you could do your own measurements for whatever it is you wanted to make, but in your scale tool. And now the, what makes this look handwritten is a sketch font. So um, what, I, what a lot of people don't like about the sketch pens is if I put this in right now, it's just going to do the outline of all of this. And so it doesn't look handwritten. The way to get around this is sketch files and sketch files and sketch fonts. Um, so I have a, it's a sketch font. This is Lori Whitlock's and it's from the Silhouette Design Store. Silhouette Design Store, um, I'm not affiliated. They have no idea who I am, but they have a lot of inexpensive. They're normally about $3 for personal use sketch files. Um, great place to go grab them if you just want to play with some. I have one on my webpage and Design Bundles is a, or Font Bundles as another place for sketch files. Just be really careful that it is a true sketch file and not a really skinny font. Um, sometimes one of the really skinny ones you can get away with with a fat marker. But if you want a true one, just make sure it's like a sketch file or single line. Or sometimes you'll see them called foil quill stuff or foil quill font. Um, so what it is is now, see how it's all a single line? There's not an outline. Um, so that way when the machine goes to draw it, it's all together and it looks like you've handwritten it. So. Basically, at this point, you're just going to stuff whatever it is you want to in your circle. So I think on my other ones, I did pot roast, and then I did the date, and then I told everybody to return my jars because they're not cheap. So let's say we'll put these two together. I pulled the shift key to select both of them together. I'm going to group them. Now I can grab both of them together and come over here to the transform panel again and the bullseye will center it for me. Now, sometimes they don't look centered because of the font and things like that. So keep that in mind. The other thing, let's ungroup this real quick. You can do is um, come back over here to this one and select all of your font. It's kind of a little squishy together. Remember we have a pen in here too, is you can character space and squish them a little farther apart um, if you have if a uh, fat pen, this is something you're going to need to do, especially if you want to do this with like a Sharpie of any kind. Sometimes the fonts are a little too close together and it's just going to run together. So you can do the character spacing and space them out a little bit so that they're not so close together for your pen. Um, but basically put whatever it is you want to, to write in here. Now the thing to also keep in mind with these guys is there's no fill color because there's no there's nothing there's no outline to fill in when you want to change the colors it's line color i'm going to change all right so to make our stickers what we're going to cut by line color and so i want my color in here to be one one color and then my circle that we're going to cut to be a different one so that way we're not having to select and unselect stuff to cut so but that's basically how I made my stickers. And then this is the page that I cut. Um, and so this is probably just the page we'll do again. It took about six minutes for this all to sketch. So keep in mind the more words and stuff you cram on this page, the longer it's gonna take to sketch. And then it didn't take any time at all to cut. So um, let's go put our paper on our mat and then we will sketch. All right, so I did want to show you one thing. This is the original design I had with the circles around it. Thought it kind of be cute. Now, it it wasn't cutting correctly. I, I'm not entirely sure why, but see how it's closer over here than it is over here. My theory is that these circles were moving the paper enough 
because like I said, it's an expensive paper. I wonder if thicker paper would have been better. Um, but anyway, it was moving the paper, I'm guessing. And so the design wasn't centered in the circle in the sticker. So keep that in mind if you end up with a problem with them. If it's too much drawing, it may be moving your paper or shifting it. And that's why they're not cutting center of your circle of your sticker. Um, I moved, I removed it and it seems to be doing a lot better. So, um, keep that in mind if you end up having a problem with your stickers. It may just be a little too much drawing or a little too much drawing in one area and that's why it's causing that problem. Alright, nothing high tech. I just took my paper, stuck it to my mat, and then I've used painter's tape on top and bottom to help hold it into place. Um, and then this is my marker holder and my ratchet blade. All right, so I have my marker holder. I have my marker holder in my holder here. And I've got it tightened down. This is a popsicle stick that comes with the marker holder. And you're going to need it. You're just going to put it underneath the holder itself. So my popsicle stick. And then put your pin down into the holder. And so you're just going to want to rest it on your popsicle stick. It does not need to be stabbing. Nothing like that, just resting. And then squish it down or tighten it. Um, tighten the screw so it holds your pen in place. And then remove your popsicle holder, your popsicle stick. Move your popsicle stick and we're gonna hit send. All right, so this is what we're going to draw today. One other thing I wanted to show you is you can, so if you select both of them, you can right click and group them. I already have them grouped. So if I ungroup them, that's what they would look like. You can group them. Now the reason I did that is because that way it's easier to move them around if you want to. Um, Cause if not, you're trying to move bits and pieces. And like I said earlier, so the inside is red and the outside is black. When I go over here to the send panel, it's going to light everything up. Now I've calmed this down a little bit. Some of it was trying to cut outside, inside. So this looked like a hot mess. So just, if you come over here and it looks like a hot mess, it's okay. Um, but right now it's lighting everything up, which would kind of be annoying to try to click and unclick to get it to sketch and cut what we want it to. So you're gonna come over here to line. We're gonna cut by line color. And so see we have sticker paper and then, so we have the black line and the red line. Now I've already done it, so I've already got it set up, but we're gonna unclick the black and we're gonna click the red. And it'll light up all of our red over here. Um, also the more you put over here, the longer it's gonna take for, this to, for it to think. So just keep that in mind. So red, now you can come down here and I've changed it to sketch and then obviously pen. And then I just used the default of seven and five. We've got cardstock. So it's gonna sketch all of this and then we're gonna get done and we'll unclick this and then click the black to cut it. And that's how it's not a complete pain in the butt. Alrighty, so the machine got done sketching everything out and now what you're going to do is we're going to unclick the red and we're going to click the black, which is our sticker paper. I've been using these defaults. Now I did increase the force to five. Or, I'm sorry. I did increase the blade to five. Um, you will need to move this if you're going to use an auto blade on the three or the four. Um, but it doesn't really matter if you have one of the old machines, just change your ratchet blade to um, the higher number. And then I'm going to up my force to 16 just to make sure it gets a little bit cleaner of a cut. Realistically, I have no idea how old my blade is and I have no idea how sharp it is. But um, last time it was tearing. Um, I'm not going to do a kiss cut. They're kind of a pain in the butt if you ask me. Um, we're just going to cut clean through the paper. I've increased the force to 16, speed of 8, blade of 5, and we're going to take the um, pen holder out of the machine and put in the ratchet blade. So all I'm going to do is take this guy out. And then I've already got my blade set to 5. 
Um, there is a little thing right here so you can put it in there and turn it if you need to. Pass that, we're gonna hit send again. And this is the reason I highly recommend the well-loved mat that has no sticky. Now legitimately, this has no sticky on it. My, it's not sticking at all. But see, even without the sticky, because of the drawing, these are still sticking to the mat. If you have a really sticky mat, you're gonna, even if you manage to get them off without tearing, you're gonna end up curling them really bad. So keep that in mind. And this is what I like. So see, they cut all the way through. Alrighty, so those are all of our stickers. This is just the um, the painter's tape stuck to it, so it'll just peel right off. It won't peel right off right now because y'all are all watching. There we go. Anytime I have to peel something with y'all watching, it's always bad. But there we go. And then you can just um, peel a sticker off the backing. Stick it on. We're going to stick it on my jars here. Now, this also says that it's permanent sticker paper, so I wouldn't recommend um, an application where you would have to take this back off. I don't think this is going to come off very well or easily. It would probably leave a mess. Um, but the but the lids for canning are, are one-time use things, so... I really like this. It really looks really cute in my pantry and I love that it feels like it's actually handwritten and it's not actually handwritten because I don't have, my handwriting isn't nearly this pretty. But it's also a great way to make stickers if you want to make stickers and you really struggle with the whole print and cut thing. Because even on the best of days, I do too, sometimes it is just not happening. So, you can sketch and make your stickers. So, if you have any questions, let me know and I will be back with another video soon. Thank you so much for watching.